Um, food and beverage really has, you know, it's always been part of, of, of hotel keeping. And yet, um, to be honest, um, so many hoteliers have rather ignored it in the past and either opted out of it completely. It's the most difficult part of the business to get right and it's very labour intensive and, and it's, it's fraught with elephant traps all the way along. Um, but actually it's also the most rewarding, it's the sexiest bit of the business, it's what makes it what, you know, it's what makes these, these buildings come alive. I mean, without the food and beverage it's a block of flats, you know, I mean it's kind of, uh, uh, it's just bedrooms really. So, so, so um, I'm a big fan of food and beverage, I think it gives identity um, uh, and actually, you know, from a revenue perspective, uh, certainly at the pig we we are about 60 percent of our revenue comes from food and beverage and about 40 percent from accommodation so uh, it's a very very important uh, part of it in fact really we you know we kind of operate like a restaurant with rooms really yeah I mean uh, I think there shouldn't really be any difference between what happens in the high street or what happens in hotels or or, or, or standalone restaurants or anywhere else for that matter. Um, it's about the, you know, the integrity and the creativity of, of, of the operators who, who, uh, who are running that, that, that place. For us at The Pig, I mean, it's, um, uh, it's quite a natural um, uh, concept really that, that you know, we use the kitchen garden, what we can't uh, grow ourselves, we source from within 25 miles, and I know kind of everyone's doing a local menu these days but you know we've been doing it uh, religiously for for a good number of years now uh, so we really support the local uh, artisan producers and so on and and that kind of it act, it helps you with your menu creation you know we're we're quite uh, brutal in our support for british produce uh, anyway we try to avoid as much as possible bringing bringing produce in from overseas um, there's a are a few exceptions, but but certainly most of our fresh produce, is, I think something like ninety percent, comes from within twenty five miles. Much more difficult in the winter in in, in the UK, but but uh, nevertheless, um, it's it's somewhere close to that. And certainly during the summer months, our own kitchen gardens produce uh, you know really uh, a lot of uh, this. I can't remember how many tons come out of the kitchen garden, but it's a lot. It's a lot of uh, a lot of produce and uh, and a lot of different and unusual things. We tend not to grow the uh, the bulk items that are low in value. So, for instance, uh, we don't grow potatoes, for instance, because they take up a lot of space. They're a one-hit crop. You know, once you've dug those potatoes, then that's it. Whereas a lot of the other uh, crops that we produce. Um, are sort of cut and come again, so you get several, several uh, uh, crops off of off of one one plant. You know. I think, to be honest, uh, outside of London, you do get much more sort of regional based uh, uh, cuisine. So, um, uh, so you do get uh, area specialities and, uh, and so on. So that's always been there. When I think, to be honest, the the real trend is the uh, is the ongoing um, advancement of plant based uh, uh, produce, so and plant plant based menus and recipes. So um, we certainly have a big uh, a big section of our menu that is um, uh, we call it uh, plant based, mostly picked this morning. I think you probably saw it on the menu earlier. Um, so. Um, uh, and I think we've got something like uh, probably eight or nine uh, menu items on on that area of the menu, and that's increasingly popular. And even personally, and, and I'm a you know I, I I eat everything. I'm a devout meat eater, um, uh, but I find myself very much drawn to that, particularly for lunch. You know, when you're looking for something a little bit lighter and and, and so on. So I think the plant-based thing isn't going anywhere, and. Uh, I think that's just going to grow and grow. That's quite a good pun, actually. Plants growing and growing, but anyway. 
all of our pig hotels are um, uh, created within either listed or certainly heritage uh, buildings and so you know to a, to a very large extent you can't just you know knock the, them around I mean thank God I mean I don't think you should be knocking them around uh, too much but uh, you can't just, you know, kind of completely ignore the architecture that is there. So, when we when we look at a building, I mean, uh, first of all, uh, very often there aren't enough bedrooms. So a lot of these country house country houses, um, uh, they ju they just don't have a, enough bedrooms. So I mean, a, a building like this, for instance, you know, I think it's got about eleven bedrooms in 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 the main the main house, which is is not viable for us. We need about thirty bedrooms. So first of all, there needs to be the ability to to create additional accommodation somehow. So often, like here, there was a stable yard and we converted the stables to create bedrooms. Or uh, as you can see out here, we have some, you know, that there's a hut out there, a timber hut called Burt's Box. And uh, so that, you know, that's, that's an additional element to the, to the, uh, to the development here. So you need to be able to create the extra bedrooms without just kind of crash and burn, you know, the whole kind of uh, uh, architecture. But actually, more constraining than that, I think, are the sort of public areas of, um, you know, of one of these buildings. So there needs to be sufficient scale that you can, um, you can create a restaurant, you can create a commercial kitchen, uh, there's enough lounge space to support that restaurant and so on and so forth. So, so that tends to be the more critical very often. So for instance in Cornwall, um, where we're, we're, uh, we're building the, the pig at Harlem Bay at the moment, uh, it's a uh, 17th century uh, farm, um, farmhouse really. Um, and when I first looked at it, I, you know, I loved the house, I loved the situation, but the, there was not enough uh, volume in, in the principal rooms to create the, uh, the restaurant. And it was only finding a way to connect two or three of them that respected the architecture and the heritage of the building. So we weren't pulling out great walls that have been there, you know, since the, since the 1600s. We we actually found uh, we found an original doorway that we recreate we reopened in order to connect uh, two or three of the, the rooms. So. So, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And, you know, many people would look at that space and think, oh, God, this is going to be a really weird restaurant because it's, it's you know, it's not, it doesn't lay out in a, in a kind of sensible fashion. But actually, you know, I quite like the quirks and, the, you know, I think that's what gives, gives it character and, you know, the, the, the strange little corners and, and so on. But so I think working with, you have to be flexible and you have, working with these, these uh heritage buildings you you have to have a sort of open mind to that you know you can't say I must have 5,000 square foot of square space square vanilla box to create my restaurant that never happens you know you can't you can't do that you, you just have to work with what's there really. Um, we currently employ about 800 staff and with the two new openings we've got in the pipeline we'd be up to a thousand staff so that's uh, you know it's, it's a fair number of people we currently uh, of that uh, 800 about a quarter are non Brits so they're um, uh, e e EU nationals and and others so of course you know brexit is the big kind of you know the the elephant in the room for us really we we, um, we really don't quite know how it's going to play out I mean since since um, uh, in the last in the last year or so at least we have had some clarity about the uh, EU nationals that are have been here for five years so they can apply for permanent status um, uh, and uh, even the ones who have been here that are currently here that have been here less than five years can apply for pre-settled status so so there is some clarity on that which is a good thing but where what the government don't really understand is that um, many of 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 that um, collection of people 
are fairly transient in their habits. So, you know, they might think about coming to the UK for a couple of years or, 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 or a few years, you know, to learn some to learn the language more or to send some money back home or whatever the, you know, whatever the rationale is. Um, so our real problem, I think, is two years down the road because uh, assuming we leave uh, uh, the European Union uh, in January, which is kind of expected at the moment, um, our current staffing levels are what they are. You know, you, you have to, you still have to fight for your, for your, for your staff. So, we, you know, uh, I mean, uh, there's still a shortage of staff in, in, in the sector. But I think we generally kind of muddle along as we, as we do now for the next couple of years. But once those Eastern Europeans uh, in particular start to disappear, uh, you know, in a couple of years' time, uh, then the question is who is replacing them. So I think that, that, you know, the real problem is a couple of years down the road. For our business, we're as I say, we're about 25% uh, non-Brits. But in, in London, you know, you're talking about 90% non-Brits. You know, so, um, uh, and whilst it might not, uh, it might not immediately uh, affect us. You know, if 90%, if there's a problem with 90% of the staffing in hospitality in the cities, then eventually it'll suck dry our areas as well. So. So there's that kind of knock-on effect. For us, I mean, our primary um, uh, uh, way of combating this is to increase increase our apprenticeship programs. So we um, we already have uh, both uh, kitchen and front of house uh, apprentices. I think we have. Circa thirty odd at the moment, princes. But I was talking to our management team the other day, uh, talking about potentially we may have to increase our uh, apprenticeships across all areas of the business to represent twenty five percent of our of our staffing, because you know that's a uh, that's a way of potentially replacing. So getting more competitive with um, creating more exciting, more interesting apprenticeship programs. Uh, I mean, already we, we do quite well with our kitchen uh, apprenticeships because we can introduce them to kitchen gardening and all that sort of jazz as well. So, so you know, we're trying to make them as interesting, exciting and uh, rewarding as possible. But I think that's the way to go. That's for us. Um, I suppose over the years, um, you know, we've we've uh, launched a lot of a lot of hotels, um, uh, all the hotel divans, and, and then and, and then the pigs and limewood and a couple of soho houses, and one thing or another. Um, and in in every instance, I think the real key, particularly you know, in in the countryside where we've tended to operate, or at least provincially, um, is is taking the local community along with you. You know, so if you just land like an alien, you know, in a field and 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 don't talk to the locals and and you know, tr and kind of somehow are um, uh, uh, somehow sort of put up some sort of guard and a rather, you know, off-putting to the to the to the locals, then I think you kill it because uh, you you want the support and uh, of of everyone around you, and you know, I always say that. You never know. You never know who the the milkman is or the dustman. Is. You never know. I mean, they their 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 family might be you know potential uh, guests in all sorts of different ways. You, you never know who who talks to anyone. So, literally every every interaction in and out of your property should be part of your marketing so you know you want everyone to talk well of you you want the dustman to talk well of you and saying they're really nice guys down at the pig but you know they always help this that you know so when he's in the pub he's probably talk, saying that to 20 people you know so that's so i think that carrying the local community is absolutely key